known as the scariest fighter in the UFC. Like, I don't know if he feels pain. Nobody wants to be trapped inside that cage with me. Once that guy gets a hold of you, there's an acceptance that certain fighters go through where they, they're locked down like, holy shit, like they're just drained from this animal mall. I'm relentless, man. It's like a, like a nightmare you can't escape. It's like one of those ones where you keep walking through doors. Tony has always been the toughest fight. Chilling out, watching Rocky IV, and he's like, let's hit this run. I thought he was f***ing joking. Oh, it's like one in the morning. It's like, bro, I need you to sprint up this f***ing hill, bro. Everything you got. So I'm running up this hill, and the El Kukui, the boogeyman's like, I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. And I'm f***ing running my ass off, bro. <laughs> like, thinking he's actually coming. You know, he's coming up there. He's trying to chase me. He's like, don't let me catch you. But something happened to Tony Ferguson that would forever change the person he was and it got to be known as one of the most tragic downfalls of any UFC fighter in history. I'm not a Pepsi. This is just my worst day ever. How did I get into the fighting? So I was in Michigan, I was looking for something different. I was bartending at the time. I go to California in Ventura County and I go into this bar with my cousin. I was looking for a bartending job. I go in there and he's like, no, we don't have any bartending spots open. He's like, you want to be a security guard? You look like, you know, you can handle your business with your ears. And I said, nah, I'm not interested. He hands me a West Coast Jiu Jitsu card. I walk right in. Right, I was like, hey, uh, do you have any equipment? And he's like, yeah, you can use these hand wraps. Sweaty as shit. I was like, these are like the lost and found kind of stuff. And he's like, yeah, there's a bin right there. There's a blue bin. You can go get some gloves too. I go over towards the blue bin and I'm looking for the boxing gloves. One was red and blue. So it was like all weird and stuff. And this guy comes over, his name is Rafuyo. And he's like, hey kid, is that you hitting the speed bag? And he comes up and he's like, where's your gloves, kid? I, like, I don't have any, I was using the ones that I lost and found. And he goes, turns around, and comes back, and he had a brand new two, uh, pair of ringside boxing gloves. And mind you, I had like maybe five bucks to my name. He's my grandma's car, and he gives me these gloves. And it was the coolest thing that anybody could have ever did to give me the tools that I needed to get into fighting. And from that moment on, it was just music to my ears. Shortly after starting MMA, Tony would meet his soon-to-be wife, Christina, in 2009. I got my wife, what's better than that, man? That's where the Tony Ferguson XT comes in. That's Christina and Tony. She's always been that sponsor for me, like, not for money, but always been that mental sponsor. In 2012, Tony joined the Ultimate Fighter after trying to get in multiple times, planning to use it as a gateway to the UFC. All right, guys, welcome to the UFC Training Center. My nose is always in the gym, and this is my passion. This is very important. You know, I'm all about 150%. You know, there's no holding back. You have a dream, and what you do is you fight for it. Although after having one too many drinks, he revealed a side of his personality that we hadn't seen before. Where's your kid at? Where's your kid at? Tony, you know, bringing up my son, was uh was definitely below the belt. Where's your kid at? Don't say it. Hey, where's your kid at? Don't say it. It's a situation back home that you know I've been fighting for over a year now to, to be in his life. Dude. Hit me and say your kid. Dude. Dude. Hit me and say your kid. Dude. Switch like that, so it's completely another person. Tony won the Ultimate Fighter, and it was no surprise why. He had a ruthless work ethic that none of the other contenders could compete with. He's just got that mindset, man. You can't teach that mindset. Like, he's coming out to hurt you in any position possible. I know Tony firsthand. We were teammates, but I watched him every day. And I do the whole workout. And then I was done. Practice was over, like everybody. Well, except one guy. That's Tony. I'm not doing hill sprints. I'm doing mountain sprints. When everybody else is sleeping, I'm still working. When I'm hurt, I, I love it. Well, what is he doing? It seems so risky. It seems so wild what he's doing. Why? Because nobody's doing it? His movement has always been very tricky to figure out. That's where a lot of people have a hard time with him. I mean, if you follow social media and you see how I've become a meme, I'm the type of guy that do everything. Yeah, I'm the type of guy that'll beat somebody's ass inside an octagon. A new interim UFC lightweight champion of the world. Whoa! Amazing! And has not lost a fight in over five years. If 
you stack up the victories, will that make you happy? I don't know. We'll keep on trying. Tony Ferguson was doing some UFC media and he tripped on a camera cord on set. When he was in his prime, that's when he fell, just tripped on some wires backstage doing an interview and ripped his fucking knee apart. They decide, Tony, you're not champion anymore, we're going to strip you. So they put it, I How fell. He was working for the UFC when he fell. I mean, he's doing uh, his, his obligations, his press obligations. It's very strange to strip him of a belt when he never lost it and he has the longest winning streak. I'm going to do this shit on my own. Ferguson came home from the hospital after surgery in April, immediately started doing 20-pound curls until he couldn't work out anymore. He is a freak. It's been five months since my injury. It took a long fucking time for me to be here. They took my belt. They took a bunch of zeros from my paycheck. How do you think I fucking feel? I actually left the location with my son. I was not comfortable with it no more. Okay. He is a professional fighter. And it's your husband? Yeah, it's my husband. What's your husband's name? Tony Ferguson? Tony? Yes. Tony's mental health continued to take a rapid decline, with his wife reporting that he had woken her and his son in the middle of the night, demanding that they weren't safe because there was going to be a great flood as a result of the lunar eclipse. Ferguson bought a life raft and took them on an 100 mile drive inland. A week later, Christina was woken up by Tony screaming and swearing at her, accusing her of being a witch. Tony believed that there were secret cameras in the fridge and ceiling fan, and that he was being watched, causing him to turn half the power off, along with cutting the wires to the air conditioning unit, thinking it contained a tracking device, further taking his son's food away, believing it to be poisoned. Tony agreed to be taken for psychological help, but when Christina arrived to pick him up, she found the furniture and walls had been destroyed, with Tony believing there was a hidden doorway under the fireplace. This caused Christina to move out and live with her parents, fearing for both her and her son's life. Christina managed to pick up Tony to take him once again to a medical center. Whilst driving there, they hit traffic. And while the car was still moving, Tony left the car and went onto the freeway, jumped over a fence and disappeared, only later returning back home. Christina said that there have been many other frightening episodes, with videos she had recorded showing Tony's irrational and paranoid behavior, depicting him crying, laughing, muttering, and yelling for no apparent rational reason. She believed that these things all started happening after the incident with his knee. I heard a quote one time from Vincent van Gogh that really rang true. He said, he has dedicated his life to his art and he has lost his mind in the process. Van Gogh suffered from violent episodes of psychological terror, intense physical pains, and regular lapses of consciousness. I heard this guy talking about this once, that it's not an art, you know, that it's just people beating each other up. And I'm like, wow, that is such an ignorant thing to say. Because when you watch someone fight, you are watching art. It's just violent. It's been a long, long year for me. You guys have no idea the stuff that I went through. is absolutely the most punishment we've ever seen Ferguson take. How many shots can one human being take? The referee had to save Tony from himself. That's how much of a warrior he is. When you when you take damage like this, you're never gonna be seen. Never ever. Even if you're Tony Ferguson. What we're seeing here is the rapid decline of Tony Ferguson because the human body, right, could only take so much. Tony Ferguson has gone from having the longest win streak in the UFC's lightweight division to now the longest losing streak. He's had a great career, done a lot of things, had a lot of big fights, and probably be, be a wrap for him, hopefully. I think T Tony overtrained himself. I mean, you know, people were saying, oh, he's different, he's, he's doing X, Y, and Z. It's like hitting poles, and it's like a car. If you overrun a car and you don't take care of it, you don't treat it, you don't all it up, it's going to break. He was so in love with the game, so in love with the sport that he was willing to take his body to, to places that were unknown. But at times when there's not an incentive and you don't do it right, you just beat up the car too much. 
Well, new this morning, UFC star Tony Ferguson has been arrested for DUI after a car crash in Hollywood. Officers say the UFC star was driving under the influence when he slammed his Chevy truck into two parked cars. Ferguson and his passenger had to be extricated from the overturned truck. The 39-year-old champion was not badly hurt. He also refused to take a breathalyzer test, so he was jailed, and his bail set at $30,000. Tony Ferguson will go out there and lose again on Saturday night. And it might just be the last time we ever get to see the legendary Tony Ferguson compete. And if that's true, enjoy this, because the sport of mixed martial arts will miss him when he's gone. My question for you is, are you ready to carry the boats on Saturday night in the Octagon? Stay up, Tony! Stay up, Tony! Stay up, Tony! It's done now! Now it's done! It's done now! What are you talking about? I am the boat. That's the best of all time, mother One important. definition of a winner is someone who never let losing stop them. Everybody's so, like, kind of, like, so uptight, so I don't worry about what everybody else thinks. Stop. You're not smiling anymore in practice. I don't see you smiling in practice. I don't see you smiling at your fights. I don't see you having fun anymore. And it was the one thing that I needed to, to hear, and I started asking for help outside of my box, getting outside of my own self to, to get myself to where I needed to go.